to be just a small part of this convention that's going to nominate Richard Nixon for another four years in the White House. With our gracious and lovely First Lady, Pat Nixon, by his side. She is one of the most intriguing figures in American history, an accomplished and effective diplomat, an ideal and an inspiration. I give you the First Lady of our land, the First Lady of our world, Patricia Ryan Nixon. high school, your mother died rather early, and then you had to take care of your father, and you were on your own. Did you kind of take care of the family? I did. <laughs> but it was a pleasure because we all worked together. She rose from the humblest and harshest of beginnings to be voted one of the most admired women in the world for 22 years. She said, people are my project and she moved easily and eagerly among people who sensed her strength and felt her compassion. She reshaped and expanded the roles of both the second and first lady. Mrs. Nixon was personally active, visiting hospitals and other institutions. Mrs. Nixon enjoyed the park herself, even to the point of rolling in a few putts. Pat Nixon truly experienced, embodied, and exemplified the American dream. Her story began in a cabin in the Copper Hills of Nevada, late on the night before St. Patrick's Day, March 16, 1912. She lost both her parents by 18 and went to work to pay the bills and keep her two brothers in school. She never let her hardships limit or define her. Independent and adventurous, in 1932, she answered an ad to drive an elderly couple across the country. They were surprised that Pat Ryan was a girl, but she got the job. She stayed in New York and took a radiology course at Columbia University. Returning to California, she enrolled at the University of Southern California. While you were in high school, did you decide what you wanted to do when you went to college, what you wanted to become? I hadn't decided exactly, except that I knew I wanted an education. I didn't want to marry early or uh, try to go up without the education which I felt was necessary. To pay for her schooling, she found work in a Los Angeles department store and as an extra in Hollywood films. And I was offered a um, part, but I decided not to drop out of school. And in 1937, when only one in 10 women earned a four-year degree, Pat Ryan graduated cum laude and with the equivalent of a master's degree. After graduation, she taught at Whittier High School, where she met a young lawyer named Richard Nixon. After World War II, the young couple settled down and began a family. Patricia was born in 1946, and Julie in 1948. When Dick ran for Congress from California's 12th district, Pat was an equal part and partner in the campaign, and the formidable Nixon team was forged. On their many travels, she excelled as an ambassador on behalf of the American people. She traveled to 81 countries and every state in the Union sharing her genuine warmth, indomitable spirit, and her compassionate strength. She broke new ground as second lady. Wherever she went, she insisted that her schedule include meetings with real people in real places. Schools, orphanages, hospitals, village markets. In Panama, she even visited a leper colony. Mrs. Nixon visited the Palo Seco Leprosarium where she toured under the personal guidance of its director. She continued this custom as First Lady. In 1970, she brought relief supplies to the devastated country of Peru. It is a signal honor for me to receive this decoration from the government of Peru. I accept it 
for the people of the United States who were glad to lend a helping hand to their neighbors in distress. Pat Nixon repeatedly broke the mold. She was the first First Lady to travel to Africa. There, and in South America, she became the first First Lady to serve as an official representative of the United States as she met the people and conferred with their leaders. She was the first First Lady to address another nation's parliament and the first to enter an active combat zone. Mrs. Nixon took a helicopter ride 15 minutes out of Saigon to a war orphanage at Two Duck. On the ground, there were jeep loads of soldiers who rode shotgun cover for her. She brushed aside official briefings so she could have more time to see the troops. When the President and First Lady visited China, millions around the world saw that remote and isolated communist country for the first time through Pat Nixon's eyes. Her attention to detail and respect for cultural tradition was noted and appreciated. From mastering basic Chinese phrases to choosing her now iconic red coat, signifying good luck and happiness. She was personally responsible for the Chinese gesture that captured the imagination of America, the gift of two giant pandas to the National Zoo in Washington. Closer to home, Pat Nixon actively encouraged women to run for public office. She supported the Equal Rights Amendment, lobbied her husband to appoint a woman to the Supreme Court, and was the first First Lady to wear pants in public. Pat Nixon truly made the White House the people's house. She was responsible for its being lighted at night, a tradition that continues to this day. She initiated rose garden tours and candlelight Christmas tours, and as part of the extensive White House renovations, which she oversaw. Good afternoon and welcome to the beautiful new blue room of the White House. Installed wheelchair ramps, pioneered special tours for the blind, and acquired more than 600 historic paintings, antiques, and furnishings, more than any First Lady before or since. She was the most public of figures, but she was intensely private, and only a lucky few knew her fun-loving spirit and her sly sense of humor. Yes, I do uh, from time to time have a good laugh over the fact that I'm supposed to be shy. Her later years afforded Pat Nixon what she truly desired most, time with her family, including her four grandchildren, Jenny, Alex, Melanie, and Christopher. She passed away, surrounded by her family, in June of 1993. Pat Nixon was as accomplished as she was modest, as strong as she was warm. Although she spent nearly 50 years in the public eye, she never sought the attention that came with her positions or activities. Even if people didn't know her, they knew that they admired her. Mrs. Nixon should not be underestimated. When you think of Pat, her husband of 53 years said, I hope that you remember the sunshine of her smile. She would like that. <laughs>